Okay, so um, obviously I got cut off a little bit there. That was my fault. I forgot that I had a 10 minute limit, but I was kind of just wrapping up talking about um, the fact that, uh, you know, geese and migratory birds seem to have a clock in their head that pulls them back to where they belong. For instance, they'll, they're from within a mile of Marshall, they'll end up back in Marshall almost every year. Now, I'm probably going to break this next part into two pieces, seeing as I have a 10, limit, 10 minute time limit. Uh, what we're going to look at and start looking at now is the nature of sleep and dreams. In particular, we're going to look at the sleep cycle and, and how that works. Now, the introduction to this is that um, why do I put the sounds in there? So damn annoying. Um, is that it, sleep's really a pretty complicated thing. Sleeping and dreaming seem pretty simple. I'm tired. I've had a long day. I put my head on the pillow. Snap, I'm out, or maybe you roll around a lot, who knows. And um, I either remember our dreams or I don't, but in reality, they're pretty complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I'm going to kind of give you a simplified version of things in these next two casts. Um, realistically, only the first hour of sleep is pretty simple because in that first hour of sleep, we go through all four of the simple stages that we're going to go through. Um, thank God they're simple um, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Uh, really pretty easy uh, to remember. And if you check your book, I know there's a diagram in there of how the sleep cycles work. Um, in that first hour, we get uh, all those stages. And we also get the deepest sleep of the night, stage three and stage four, are deep sleep. And so we only get so many of those a night. Actually, most of the time, we only get two, um, no matter how long you sleep. So it's kind of important to remember that they, that deep sleep is valuable. Now, um, in this introduction, I want to give you some other things about sleep. So obviously, I think you're aware of the fact that you experience um, a lot of biological changes during sleep. First of all, your blood pressure drops um, to its lowest rates of the day because the body doesn't need to work as hard to keep you functioning. You're not running. You're not overly thinking. You're literally laying still, maybe doing a little bit of rolling around. And um, probably the most strenuous things get are dreaming. Now, during dreams, we can have the blood pressure that basically mimics what it would be like if we were awake and doing that activity. So if you're running in your dream, you might have blood pressure that's very similar to if you were running in real life. Um, tagging along with that, your heart rate is, is going to be at its lowest and your breathing rate is going to be at its lowest. Um, if you've ever babysat, this is one of the scariest things I remember about having um, having babies when Kate and Phoebe were little was, you know, watching them while they were taking naps and freaking out because their, their breath was so slow that I was afraid that they were you know, not breathing. So uh, not just that, but some people experience other things like restless leg syndrome, some people have sleep apnea that we'll talk about later in the chapter when I'm back on Thursday. And, um, you know, just some other general things that we'll look at later. Now, before we actually sleep, we actually enter something called a twilight state. Uh, twilight state, uh, twilight is another word for sunset. And this is going to be the period of time before we actually fall asleep, the relaxation before. You're still pretty aware. Um, if your phone went off, you would you would answer it. If um, your parents called for you, you would go. Um, you're just kind of in that nod off state. Uh, you've probably done this in a class where your head starts to drop. You're aware of it. You catch yourself. You do the classic jerk. Everyone that's around you laughs. There you go. Okay. Now, during that twilight state and when you're awake, you're experiencing something called beta waves. Beta waves are the brain waves of being awake. They're active. They're responsive. Um, you're generally conscious of the things that you're doing. Now, um, another important part of sleep that I'm going to get to before I go into the actual sleep cycle is REM sleep or REM sleep. Um, kind of important to regular functioning and uh, a synonym for REM sleep could be dream sleep. I'm going to click the cell out so the stupid noises stop. Ah, clapping. So fun. Um, so REM stands for rapid eye movement. You guys knew that. That's generally going to be in a right, left, left, right pattern. Um, you do this uh, while you are dreaming. Um, it happens anywhere between four to six times a night, uh, depending on how long you sleep. If you're getting eight hours of sleep, you're probably having between four to six REM periods or four to six dream periods per night. Um, this can vary, give or take, a little bit. Um, you know, if you really want to know how many you have, you're gonna have to go to a sleep specialist and get a sleep study done. And they're not gonna do that just because you want to. Um, generally, there's some physical reactions that happens here. The brain experiences an increase in electrical activity because realistically, most of the things that I read tell me that the brain doesn't really know the difference between 
um, a dream and being awake. So if I'm dreaming that I am doing one of my stupid Spartan races, my brain thinks I'm Spartan racing, at least to some extent. And so I'm going to see some of those physical increases in things. My breathing and heart rate are going to increase as well. They're going to mimic what's going on. If you ever had a particularly scary or stressful dream, you kind of wake up with your heart pounding in your chest. Um, that's generally pretty normal. However, your body is paralyzed. If you're running in your dream, you're not in your bed, you know, cranking away your arms and legs. You're generally like not stiff as a board, but pretty much non moving. Your vocal cords will move. You can still talk. You can still yell. Uh, if you talk during your sleep, don't worry. You're fine. Totally normal. Nothing to worry about. You have an REM period roughly every 90 minutes. Now they do vary in length. So you can't just divide the number of sleep, number of minutes of sleep you had by 90 and, and come up with how many dreams you had in a night, but, but, but roughly you can figure it out from there. Again, not everybody's totally the same here. So you might see a little bit of variation. Now, um, you're really difficult to wake up during REM sleep. Uh, that is because your brain is someplace else. Uh, your brain is doing that Spartan race. It is in class. It is, who knows what you guys are dreaming about. Hey, I'm, some of you guys don't even know what you're dreaming about. But your brain's in another place, so you're really hard to wake up. That's why sometimes things like the music from your alarm clock can all of a sudden just kind of get networked into your dream and you start hearing music. I remember a dream one time of um, being in class, and I always wake up to an obnoxious sound like, meh, 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 meh. And I remember somebody was asking me a question, and all of a sudden, rather than there being words coming out of their mouth, their mouth was moving, but it was just going, ah, 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 and I became really aware of the fact that this isn't normal, and oh, that's my alarm, and, and I remember waking up. Now, REM periods and your dreams do range from about five minutes to 40 minutes. Um, each period gets longer. Um, the first one's about five to 10 minutes, and the longest one's the night range up to about 40. It probably seems pretty weird considering you feel like you've had dreams that have taken place over the course of hours and things like that. Now, people sometimes wonder, can can I dream like the first five minutes is chapter one and the next one's about 10 is chapter two and so on and so forth? That's That, that can happen. Um, but generally speaking, what happens is you do generally tend to have separate uh, dreams each time. And maybe that can attribute to when you get up and go, oh, my God, that was such a weird dream. Maybe you're actually mashing together um, many dreams. Um, to go along with this, obviously, the chances of your dreams being remembered gets greater as the night goes on because the length of the dream becomes longer. I think you're far more likely to remember something uh, from a 40-minute movie as opposed to a five-minute short film. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this here and just leave this at the intro and the REM period. Uh, remember, if I'm going too fast for you, you obviously the beauty of this is you can stop, you can pause, you can rewind, you can do whatever it is you have to do. And if you have questions about something I've said, um, I, I am available via Google chat or email today. So just, you know, pop me a message. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, hope you guys got something out of this. Thanks.